Joining me again on the Believe in Jets podcast, columnist and Jets beat writer for the New York Daily News, my buddy, Antoine Staley. What's up, Antoine? How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Football season's here. I'm excited. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I'm, it's been a long like journey, especially the training camp. But now like we get to start playing games and seeing the live bullets fly. So that's the fun part now, at least for me anyway. Training camp uh, is a tease. You know, the first week that it's back, we love it. Afterwards, it's just like, okay, just get us to the regular season. Every time the Jets now post a video on their social media of Aaron Rodgers, oh my God, look at that throw from Aaron Rodgers. Oh my God, here's Aaron Rodgers doing this. Here's him mic'd up. I don't care. I want to see him play regular season games. Yeah, it's just, you know, it just got, like you say, it gets old after a while. Like, yeah, I mean, especially with the players, nobody really plays in the preseason. Well, I won't say nobody. Certain teams do not play in the preseason. The Jets. Starters in the preseason. <laughs> Jets are among some of those teams, too. But uh, when you don't see the stars out there playing in the preseason games, you don't get as enthusiastic as you know, with the regular season. But now, you know, now you're going to have all the starters there. The 49ers are getting back at full strength. The Jets are about there, although like I'm sure we'll touch touch on why they're not at full strength too as well. Yeah, so you mentioned the 49ers, you mentioned the Jets. Let's start with the Jets. You tweeted something really funny but almost kind of sad. Uh, during his introductory press conference, Hassan Reddick said, you guys aren't ready for what's going to happen next. And you tweeted, yes, we certainly were not ready for this. So what is happening right now? He is now officially the last player in the league who is holding out nothing nothing's on that front too i've talked to several people and nobody knows any t- anything about when he possibly might show up so you know he's not there the jets have you know returned back started practicing on tuesday uh they were in the building on monday too a little bit but it's you know now tuesday they'll have a little bit of a light work workout and then wednesday will be a mandatory day off before you know thursday they'll start ramping things up you know getting ready for the 49ers like it would be a traditional game week getting into monday night but uh it seems like you know he's not in the building it seems like this is going to go on for you know a bit while longer and it's no end in sight at the moment Did you um, are you excited for it to be on a Monday night or are you like you just can't wait for it to start? Are you going to be antsy all day Sunday watching the other games just waiting for Monday night? I prefer to have one o'clock games on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but oh, I, well, I get, good luck because we'll get to the schedule appeal. in a second. First seven yeah, the, of the first eleven games. <laughs> yeah, the appeal of obviously, you know, if you're a fan, like you love being having your team play on Monday night. It's in front of everybody. You know, it's national TV. You know, you get excited. You're the only game on typically so yeah you definitely uh from a fan perspective uh i can understand the excitement me i mean sunday i guess i'll i'll watch a little bit of the games i'm actually happy i'm able to do that i'll be in san like i fly to san francisco on saturday so i'll be able to watch the games on sunday so i think most of the reporters are leaving on sunday so they probably just you know kind of try to see if they can see some things on the plane but for me yeah i mean i don't i won't be too antsy i just you know i'm ready I, I'll, i'm just ready for the whole season to start really it starts basically on thursday night with chiefs ravens and then friday night with the brazil game which i'm very interested to see in a lot of different levels with the eagles and packers yeah that should be interesting i'll be on sunday working on the radio for the new york yankees so i'll probably have one eye on the yankee game and then be fully focused on red zone. Um, So that's going to be me on Sunday. And hopefully uh, the Yankees don't do anything too interesting. So I don't have to watch too closely. Um, But we talked about the Jets side of it, the Niners side of it. They get the Trent Williams deal done. They get the Brandon Ayuk deal done. How does that impact the Jets game on Monday? Well, I don't think it does because I think, well, I think, well, I'll say this from their game planning perspective, I don't think it does because I think they were planning for them to be there anyway. Right. Uh, I, I think that was the whole thing. They thought Trent would be there. I did too. They thought Brandon Ayuk would be there. I did as well. Uh, I didn't see him sitting out uh, games there. Chris McCaffrey's back healthy too as well. I expected him to start practicing. So, yeah, uh, you know, you healthy-ish. know, everything. Well, as healthy as he's going to be. I mean, he's yeah, always, well, he's always. He's always has something, but guess what? Well, no, the last two years he was healthy. That's why it's like, you know, the calf strains are starting to pop up again. So I don't know. But I ain't drafted him in fantasy football. He's still the best running back in football. No, I'm not a fantasy guy, really. But I have a I have an auction league draft tonight. I could bid, you know, as much as I want. Am I outbidding everyone for Christian McCaffrey tonight? Uh yeah, I would I mean, it's other 
this other running backs like Brees Hall. I think Brees Hall uh, value is going to be really high this year too. And this other running uh, B. John Robinson is another guy, especially mm-hmm. when uh, you got Kirk Cousins there. I definitely can see him having a bit time year. He kind of has that similar skill set as McCaffrey and also Brees Hall as well. So yeah, I mean, I I would take him, but you know, it's number one. I think you can kind of question there. Like you could also take a wide receiver too, like a CD. I think CD Lamb has a lot of value too because you know. He's going to be the number one target of the Cowboys. He's probably going to get like 140 catches at least if he stays healthy. They're not going to run the ball either because Zeke Correct. Elliott is their number one running back. <laughs> like Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I imagine he's going to get a lot of touches this year. All right. Let's get to the athletic report. We talked about this. Um, we texted back and forth about this. Um, and then I talked with Bilal about it on Friday. Basically, the report says they're in disarray. Aaron Rodgers is running the organization. Bilal's reaction... Let me guess, his player got cut this week, you know, about the agent who said that. Or my reaction was, let me guess, his client is Hassan Reddick. The point is, anyone who, and in, in, uh, Connor Hughes was on WFAN that morning, the morning the report came out, anyone who's been in the building, like yourself, who's been in the locker room, who's seen what's going on there, can attest that it's been awesome and nothing but great this year. Where do you think that report comes from? And just talk a little bit about if you can dispute that report. Well, I mean, from this point, from the last athletic article, from this point on, like this year, I think everything has been good. Like mm-hmm. everything that I've seen. Last year is a whole different story. Like there's a lot of different things come out. We don't need to necessarily rehash everything that the athletic came out with, but I do a lot of that stuff anyway. But, you know, from this point on, like, the players love Aaron. Like, they, you know, they go to bat for him. Sure, I mean, quarterbacks get preferential treatment just like any other star players, too. But at the same time, it's no, it's no disarray in the locker room. It's no uh, you know, will towards Aaron. The play, like I say, again, the players really do like him. And then, again, like, I don't necessarily like a lot of anonymous sources because I think if you say something, then – Put your name on it. Put your put your name on it. Like, yeah, just say, you know, hey, you're an agent. Like, go ahead and put your name on it. Because we have no idea who this could be. Like you said, it could be Hassan Reddy's agent. I'm not saying it is. It could be anybody. It could be, you know, a player that's very disgruntled, wants to get out of New York for the Jets or not getting playing time. Like, you don't know what people's agendas are. So when you come out with these uh, anonymous reports, like, you're not getting the full story. So that's why I'm not, I, I like I said, I hate writing about them. I, I never really use them in my stories either because, again, like, if you really want to say something, then, yeah, put your name attached to it. So, but, yeah, going back to your point and everybody else's, like, I, it's nothing to just suggest that that report is true at, at all. Yeah, the bottom line is he's a star quarterback. This franchise has been starving for a star quarterback, so you give him some deferential treatment. That's not crazy. And every teammate, I talked to Ian O'Connor about this, but when when he came out with the Rodgers book, every teammate, every friend of his actually speaks really highly of him, loves the guy. So it's almost like there's two different people here, right? There's the public persona, which he's turned himself into a villain type of, you know, persona, almost like a WWE fighter, right? And now, you know, but... The actual Aaron Rodgers, the person, his teammates and everyone who's played with him loves him. Correct. Like, I mean, I think he he's done himself no favor at times with, you know, stuff that's not football. It's uh, almost like he likes it. it. Yeah, which is also kind of uh, the irony in that is um, at, at the end of the last year, the press conference, he was like, we need to get the BS, you know, oh, that has oh nothing God. to do with football out of the building, which he's part, he is part of that problem too. But again, like from his teammates' perspective, they love him. They adore him. They love playing for him. They want to go to bat for him. And I'm sure, and I'm sure I'm going to ask in the locker room, they really want this for him. Like, I mean, considering what happened to him last year and, you know, him, you know, four plays in, the season's over. Uh, I had to think a lot of his teammates really want, you know, not only just to have a successful season for themselves, but also for Aaron, too, in the process. Is Adam Schefter trolling Jet fans with his video that he posted with Leonard Floyd on Twitter today? He's like... A year ago, last year, he sacked Aaron Rodgers and got him out for the season. Now he's going to try and sack Aaron Rodgers on the first Monday night again. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I can't speak on that, but I mean, it's it, I mean, it's interesting to see hear Leonard's voice for perspective about the whole thing too. But I don't think Jets fans blame him. I don't think they never really blamed him for the play. I mean, he's just making the play. I mean, I think if anything, you might have been, some blame maybe to Dwayne Brown or even Aaron himself because you I know, know he but, easily could have thrown the ball. But yeah, I, yeah, but I get what you're, I get what you're like asking. That, the way yeah. Schefter positioned it was just so like 
makes me want to pull my hair out and yell, right? Like, yeah, it was about it, it's kind of cringeworthy. Yeah, I mean, he could have it's another way he could have phrased it without I mean, with, with also having them on at the same time. Yeah, so now we look forward to this year and like you said, the Jets fans just want him to stay healthy. The Jets players just want him to stay healthy. Everyone just wants Rodgers to stay healthy and they believe and you've been at practice, you've seen him throw the ball, you've seen him move around. People believe that he can still do what Aaron Rodgers does if healthy, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Again, my my worry about the Jets has nothing to do with him necessarily outside of can he stay healthy because obviously older, as you get older, you know, the, the ability to yeah. stay healthy you know, go, wanes a little bit. But so you know, what's I your biggest from, concern? Like uh, with the team? Yeah. Uh, coaching staff. Just if, mm-hmm. if things start to hit the fan again, how can they handle it? Because – as we've seen in the past with, you know, Robert Sala or Joe Doug, or you know, just the regime in general, they have not been able to handle, you know, when certain things, you know, don't go to plan. And whether it be injuries on the offensive line, whether it be game plan and scheme and you know, whatever you want to call it, I just think that I think that's still a big question mark, you know, even entering the season. So Aaron playing, like I think Aaron's gonna be great. Like I think I think he's gonna be good. I don't know if he's gonna be 2020, 21 Aaron Rodgers, but I don't think they also necessarily need him to be. As long as he's a sound decision maker, not turning on the ball over, which he typically does. And I mean he has the lowest interception rate ever for any quarterback. So long as he continues to be that Aaron Rodgers, which we've seen throughout the course of his career, they're going to they're be fine, at least on the offensive side of the ball. And also defensively, I am worried now that you don't have Reddick because now you have to re- try to replace those 20 sacks that you, you're missing from last year. Yeah, no, it's tough for sure. And I, you know, you need guys like Will McDonald and even Jermaine Johnson to take another step. And obviously the interior defensive line should be dominant. Um, so that should help the exterior guys. But we'll see. I mean, Robert Sala's defense works if they're getting pressure. And if they're not getting pressure, it's hard for it to work. And, you know, any defense has a hard time working against the 49ers. What do you think? If if the Jets' defense looks great on Monday, does that turn the pressure up a little bit on Hassan? Uh, maybe a little bit because uh, at that point, they maybe it shows that they don't they have some leverage, which I think yeah. – I mean, they kind of do anyway because, I mean, he's, he's going to get five game checks at this point, which is yeah. going to be close to – eight hundred thousand dollars uh as i wrote in my article so yeah i mean you're missing game checks and then you already been fined for missing all the over two million dollars for missing yeah. uh training camp and you know the workout bonus so yeah i mean if the great squad didn't lay a dud against the 49ers then all of a sudden then people are looking towards him and like oh come save us we really need you in that sense so yeah maybe he does get what he wants there but i think also i think joe douglas said something interesting last week when we spoke to him that we, he has to look out for the entire locker room when he has to think about these like these discussions with Haran Reddick. Meaning that you got to pay a lot of people after the all season. Uh, Saul Gardner, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall potentially, Jermaine Johnson, and Michael Carter II is also a free agent. So what does that say in the locker room when a guy who's only showed up in the building one time, uh, you're going to cater to him, and then he has the teammates. A lot of teammates haven't even met him. And then now you're going to just decide, OK, we're just going to give give in and give them this big deal, um, especially an almost 30 year old pass rusher, uh, you know, just a credible amount of money. So I think, you know, Joe, Doug, I thought that was just interesting the way that he phrased that. But it's actually true. Yeah, it's not a good look for sure. And it's different than Chris Jones last year. The Chiefs get off to the slow star or slow star. Oh, and one on Thursday night football against uh, against Detroit. And then right away. You know, Chris Jones gets this big deal, you know, the next day or whatever it was, and he's back in the building and everyone's happy again. Uh, that's pretty easy to go and say, hey, let's go get one of our leaders, our best players who's been here for a long time and sign him after we're struggling a little bit. I don't know if the Jets, even if they get blown out, even if they give up 35 points to the Niners, I don't think the Jets are just going to be like, OK, Hassan, come, we'll we'll give you this big contract. And it's a different situation, too. I mean, yeah. Chris Jones is, was in the building. Teammates knew him. He was a leader in that defense in the locker room. Son Reddick's been in the building one time. Mm-hmm. So, again, like, it's a whole – it's like apples and oranges. I don't think you necessarily compare it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, like, you cannot just, from a Joe Douglas perspective, just give in to the bands like that. They gave him – I, I the only thing I fault them for is just actually trying making the trade when he rejected it the first time. And that yeah. at that point, I probably would have said, "Okay, we're moving on. I don't want to take that risk." He already requested a trade from the Eagles. Then you know, let's pivot somewhere else and you know try to find you know pass rushing help around the league somewhere else. Like at another option, whether it be a trade or whatever the case may be. 
But, you know, from Reddit perspective, yeah, I mean, at some point you just got to show up. Otherwise, again, like he's going to lose, the Jets are going to hold his rights next year too. So exactly. you have to think that at, by week eight or week nine, you know, maybe he does show up. And then at that point, we, we'll see what the Jets are. So speaking of, where do you think the Jets will be? Week one, we obviously know, is in San Francisco. They have a relatively easy schedule to start, although I push back on that because the travel is going to be extremely difficult. Lots of right. short weeks in there. Where do you see the Jets season going? Do you have a season win-loss prediction? Bilal and I went through the games one by one. I'm not going to make you sit here and do that, but maybe we'll <laughs> highlight a few special ones. Yeah. Where do you think, you know, 18 weeks the Jets are at the end of the year? I think they can finish anywhere between eight and 11 wins, and I wouldn't be terribly surprised because I think okay. that's about where they are. I had them at nine and eight, and I think they're right on the cusp of like being a playoff team too as well. Um, you know, right there, the Dolphins also have some major questions there. I think it's major questions throughout the whole division. Buffalo, mm-hmm. you know, defensively, Matt Milano, uh, obviously, and that injury really hurts them from a defensive perspective yeah. there, although they seem like they were able to navigate it a little bit well last year. We'll see how things turn out there. But I still think they have the best quarterback and the coach in the division right now, too, proven otherwise. I think mm-hmm. the Bills are still the team to beat, and I think the Jets and Dolphins are, you know, jockeying for that second spot in wild card. Uh, but yeah, I got them nine and eight. They're easily can see them finishing ten and seven. But yeah, it kind of goes back to your point too. Like they have to get off to a really good start because that back half of the schedule is not easy at all. Although you do end the season at home for once against the Dolphins, so that'd be good too. Which could come down to, you know, who makes the playoffs and who doesn't. I love that game because the Dolphins in the cold weather to end the season. We know how that looks already, right? Come on, I like I like I love that spot for the Jets. If the Jets are ten or whatever, let's say they're ten and seven at that point, ten and six at that point, or nine and six, nine and seven at that point, they need that last win to get into the playoffs. And the Dolphins are coming in, and Aaron Rodgers is healthy in the cold weather at home. I know the Jets have historically lost games like that. Aaron Rodgers historically wins game like games like that. And so I'll take it, you know, like if we're at that situation, winning you're in, I'll, you know what? I'm happy. That's the, with all the ups and downs of the season, I think they're going to start 0-2. I think they lose Monday wow. and then they have to come home, short week, prepare two game plans, one for Tennessee, one for New England for the home opener. I think they kind of, you know, have a little bit of a look ahead spot for that first game on the road, first home game for the Titans, home opener with a new head coach and everything that goes on there. I think the Jets might lose that game after having to travel back to Tennessee on a short week. I think they start 0 2, but I, I have them at 11 and 6 the rest of the way. Wow. You you really have faith in them like late on in the season then if they start 0 2. I do because I don't think it matters. The point is, we look at all these other teams. Oh, they're such good teams. The problem, the, the thing is, Aaron Rodgers is, if he's Aaron Rodgers and the Jets' defense is as good as it's supposed to be, and really Brees Hall, and late in the season, teams are wearing down and Brees Hall's just getting going and he's, they're running the offense through him. I, th- I think this team, ground and pound, that's how they're going to win games. Aaron Rodgers makes a few big throws down the stretch of games, right? All he has to do, fourth quarter, he makes four or five big throws every fourth quarter. The rest of the game, they're just beating you up on defense and controlling. The clock with the run game with Brees Hall, I think that's the recipe. Yeah, I, I had Brees Hall. That's how you beat offense. good teams. I had them. I had Brees Hall as my offensive MVP. So I mean, I actually put in an article. I was like, a lot of people would probably expect Aaron to be here, but I actually think Brees Hall is going to have a really big year. They're going to rely a lot on him. Uh, will it be catching the ball out the backfield or also you know running between the tackles too? I think that's how you get to the playoffs because I mean, this is set. I mean. I don't know if you can necessarily put everything on Aaron, especially at his age and coming back from the injury and everything like that. I don't think that's necessarily fair to him. Just give me that's two to three to clutch throws him. again. Yeah, is that, that, just don't turn the ball over. Just don't yep. turn the ball over. Which again, like he, he has and capitalize in the red zone. That, that yeah, that's what exactly. they couldn't do last year. The last few years, they couldn't capitalize in the red zone. They turned the ball over too much. You're yeah, not exactly. asking Aaron Rodgers to be prime Aaron Rodgers. Correct. Correct, and then uh, you just have to hope the offensive line does not Holds up. Get, yep. stay healthy like like the you, like the last couple of years. Do you like the depth on the offensive line? I thought we saw a lot from Carter Warren and some of these guys last year, and Xavier Newman. Like I thought, some of these guys actually played well down the stretch of the season last year when they needed to. Now they're the depth piece pieces. Do you think that you know even if one of those guys has to step in for a couple of games, do you think this offensive line can sustain an injury or two? 
uh, a, a injury, yes. Uh, when it gets to or two or three, like how it was been last, how it was last year. Okay, but what team in the NFL could sustain three injuries? There's no offensive line in the NFL that could sustain three. Uh, what well, the Browns did, the Browns right. did last year, and then they still found a way. But that's not that's not common typically. But I will say that like they just got ravaged last year. Fourteen different combinations in seventeen games. There, I think you know the thing that I did it like they they got uh, fashion new for Penn State just in case something were to happen to Tyron Smith because you know you look at his injury history, it suggests that he's probably not going to play all seventeen games. So to get that and just have him as the swing tackle because you got two older tackles in him and Morgan Moses. So long as you know you have to hope ABT can stay healthy. Have to hope you know Tyron Smith can give you. I would say 13 games or so. If he can do that, then I think you're going to be in good shape. Listen, if we see Fashanu for three or four games and we see, obviously, Tyra Taylor for three or four games, I think the Jets can survive with that if they keep relying on the defense and they keep relying on Brees Hall. My only concern with Tyra Taylor coming in for a few games. Well, not only that, but my concern with Tyra Taylor playing for a few games is who's calling the plays on offense. And we know when Rodgers is there, he's calling the plays on offense. Yeah, typically, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure Hackett would give him a suggestion, but he's going to change it if he doesn't like it. So, but yeah, with Taylor, it's definitely going to be an interesting situation, kind of like what you saw last year with Zach Wilson or whoever was in there, Tim Boyle. Well, we know Tyrod Taylor also, right? He has the autonomy at the line of scrimmage. We saw how that worked out at the end of the half in Buffalo last year when he was playing for the Giants. I don't know if you remember the game where the end of the half, primetime game, and they didn't score there, and Dable's freaking out at him because Taylor came to play. I mean, yeah, I, I do remember that. Yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of a mess to say the mm-hmm. least. All right. So last thing, do you have any hot takes for us? Doesn't have to be the Jets across the league. And then I'm going to ask you for a Super Bowl prediction. So I don't know if you did that already in your column. So if you I don't, did. I don't. You did not a column, but we all, we all were asked to make predictions. So OK, like, so, yeah, I like I like Jacksonville to make the playoffs. I, know I love Jacksonville. Are, I have I think a lot of people. Division. I do, too. I think yeah. I think Houston gets the wild card spot, but I like uh, Jacksonville. I think a lot of people are sleeping on them. Like everybody mm-hmm. loves Houston right now. The additions that they made. Trevor Lawrence was I, eight I, and I three too. when he was healthy last year. Correct. Like that's the thing. That's what I think people have forgot. Like they were now Houston's the flavor of the month. Like everybody mm-hmm. loves like CJ Stroud and yes. everything, and like D'Amico Ryan's, and you know, again, would... deservedly so. Like what they were able to do last year, but don't sleep on Jacksonville. I think mm-hmm. they got their team that's, especially with Doug Peterson as the coach, they're going to be, they're going to factor into the playoff race for sure. Like, I think, I agree. I think they, I had to win a division and the Texans at the wild card. I have, and maybe you can agree or disagree with this. The NFC North, I think they're all going to beat up on each other to the point where I don't think any team in that division wins more than 11 games. Not the Lions, not, not, not the Packers, none of them. Uh, yeah, I could, I could definitely see that too. I, they could I like all go Pack- three and three against each other in the division. I like the Packers to win the division, actually. Uh, yeah, I like the Lions to get in the playoffs, too. Yeah, I like them both in the playoffs, but I have them right there, ele- both of them at 11-10 wins. That's it. Yeah, I mean, then you got Chicago's improved there. I yeah. think the Vikings are very uh, sneaky. It's just going to depend on how Sam Darnold plays. I if love he plays, Sam. If Sam plays, like, he's just solid. I think they have a good enough team around him where, I mean, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but, you know, seven, eight wins isn't out the question for the Vikings. A couple of things. Sam to throw the most interceptions in the league this year. He's like not the favorite, but that's a good gambling bet because he's going to be just throwing it up a lot to to Justin Jefferson. So you can assume sometimes it's going to be double, triple coverage and he's going to play every game you assume. So that's a nice bet. And Brees Hall's like plus 800 to be the rushing leader in the NFL. Who's he competing with outside of McCaffrey? Like I really think Brees Hall is going to be the rushing leader in the NFL this year. Plus 800. That's value. It depends on how they use him, like throughout the court. Like some games, I'm sure he'll be used more as a pass catcher than run. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if necessarily he'll lead the league, but I know he'll be up there pretty high, like in the top two or three. Yeah, and that's where. So if you believe he's going to be top two or three, then the value at plus eight hundred is good value. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not um, bad at all. What's your Super Bowl prediction? I had Cincinnati um, and 49ers, and I have Joe Burrow winning the MVP. Wow. So yeah, I like I like really. I I just it's so hard for me because he's he's hurt all the time. Joe Burrow, like people could talk about Rodgers, they could talk about Lamar. Joe Burrow's been hurt every year. Just about yeah, just about yeah. That's the biggest question. But if he can stay healthy, we know that we know he has no fear of going into Kansas City and uh, playing him in Arrowhead. So, no, yeah, right. I, I it's a, it's a little overblown. I think like 
the whole Burrow head thing is a little overblown. Like what he. Well, I ain't saying all that. I, I, I'm not saying all that, but I'm saying it's something to be said for that. I mean, look at look at a guy like Josh Allen. Not, not to say Josh Allen lost that game because you know he didn't play well against the Chiefs, but you know they, he can he can get the job done. That's basically what it is. It's true, and neither. I mean, Lamar, you can't you can blame him. He had some tough throws, but at the end of the day, I think also they the. They didn't run the ball. They were supposed to run the ball. They, every they time. didn't. They the play call was very suspect. It was awful. Uh, it was terrible. It was very, By the way, a, I do think the Ravens' defense will take a step back. They lost Patrick Queen. They lost, yeah. um, obviously, Mike McDonald leaves, right? And he was exceptional defensive mind, the defensive coordinator. Yeah. Um, he's going – he's coaching in Seattle now, right? Um, so I do think the Ravens' defense takes a step back. But I will say this. I think their offense will be great, and I think they're going to run the ball down the Chiefs' throat on Thursday, and I like the Ravens in the game on Thursday night again. I think Derrick Henry's just going to run every single time. Him and Lamar, it's going to be fun to watch, the two of them. Uh, and I think that the Ravens win. on th- if, Even if they don't have a great season, I think they may be you know, also 11 wins, not the 13-14 win season, maybe 11-12 no, wins. Not that division. Not that yeah, not, not exactly. Sort of- I think the Ravens are between 10 and 12 wins. But I think Thursday night they beat the Chiefs. How about yeah, I, can, that? I can see that. I can see that. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how they the dynamic with him and Derek Henry, uh, Lamar and Derek uh, is like moving forward because that could be a lethal combination if used correctly. Yeah, I hope they're cooking up some cool stuff, you know. And we don't have uh, what's his name, um, uh, the old offensive coordinator there anymore. I forget. I'm forgetting his name now. Uh, but you know, um, yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it. We're going to try and have you on. I guess Tuesdays work for you throughout the season. Yeah, it'll work. Uh, net, we'll see next week too because I fly. I was back thinking of Greg Francisco. Roman, by the way. So yeah, yes, uh, that's right. That's Greg Roman, yeah. yeah, yeah, not yeah. there anymore. So hopefully they'll have some more creative offensive schemes this year, yeah. like they did last year. Although it looked like Greg Roman was calling the plays in the playoffs last year. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so let's do. Uh, we'll tentatively say Tuesdays throughout the the season. Fans of this show can listen to Antoine Staley and of course find your work New York Daily News where else yeah yes sir just just the New York Daily News uh also find me uh, all social media platforms at Antoine Staley it's pretty simple enough all right bro good luck this season have fun out in San Francisco and I'll talk to you after week one all right sounds good man see ya